Hello, and welcome to the Paul White Show. We're on location today. Uh, we're going to teach you about some how we get fish bait. Some of you use fish bait, but you don't know how it gets from where it comes from until it gets in the bait shop, and I'll dip it up for you. So this morning, we're going to show you how, uh, where some of it comes from, and, and a breeder, and how we get it, okay? So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Hello and welcome back to the Paul White Show. Uh, I am on location uh, today and I'm east of Wichita and I met one of my friends that is a breeder of fish bait. Uh, good morning, Howard. Morning, Paul. How you doing? I'm pretty good. About the storm coming through tonight, so yeah, we'll see I how it goes. All right. Okay, Howard. Uh, now, Howard, uh, how did you get started in, in breeding bait and what type of bait do you breed? Yeah, I do goldfish and crawfish. It was a few years ago, probably about 10 years ago, I had a... Mm -hmm. Chinese friend there in town that eats, uh, cooks up a lot of gold, uh, crawfish. So okay. uh, her boyfriend kept saying, hey, won't you uh, raise them in your pond? And I had no concern of doing it at all. And right. He bugged me for a few months. And then one time he says, hey, she's buying about $4,000 worth of crawfish. And I was like, hey, I might be interested in that <laughs> then. But um, after I got to investigating, mm -hmm. there's a lot of regulations to mm -hmm. doing it as produce uh, to feed the people. Right. And, uh, there ain't so many regulations as fish bait because they right. don't care what the fish eat. But right. all they're mostly concerned about is the mussels and hitchhikers. So I have a little secluded little area for those things mm -hmm. won't get in. It's what the wildlife park wants. Right. And contain it and look at it and take care of it that way. So that way I have a little bit better control of them. So you guys started in, in uh, breeding them. And uh, what, what, what does it take to, 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 to breed them? I mean, how did you get started uh, actually to get the process started? Of breed them. Well, yeah, it was. Uh, I went and purchased some and stocked my pond with them and several mm -hmm. different types of goldfish for something to them eat. I didn't know much about them. Did a lot of YouTube videos and research, look on them, see what they like, what right. they ate. Seemed like they eat pretty much everything and self-contain themselves. Mm -hmm. So it ain't really too hard of a process to do if you got the right little area. Okay, and and they 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 uh, breed. Yeah. And, 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 and then you get your, uh, whatever you call them, colony or troop or yeah. whatever started. And uh, uh, you know how often they breed? I mean. Uh, I think they breed most during the year. They uh, could have up to about 3,500 babies at 200 babies or eggs, I guess you uh -huh. say, at a time. But, uh -huh. you know, if there's other things in there, frogs or what, will eat some of the eggs. So right. you might out of 200 end up 50 of them that right. survive. But right. I've seen to have no problem with them. Okay. From, from birth to... Oh, uh, now we're talking crayfish. From right. birth to uh, selling size, which some of the fishermen use them when they get about two inches long, one and a half, two inches long. Some of them like the smaller ones, right. uh, and then some of them like the larger ones. So uh, how long does it take it uh, from maybe, say, birth till you could actually use them or sell them? Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. I really ain't really pay too much attention to them because they just... They just went crazy on right. me, you know, started okay. growing up and getting big quick. Oh, okay. So I just didn't matter a couple months or so. They... Okay. Okay. From birth to right, you can right. start yeah. selling them or use them or, or whatever. So two months in, in, in the production. Now, you also have, uh, you mentioned goldfish in the same pond with the crawdads? Yes, I got goldfish in there too. Them fishermen sure like them. Oh, yeah. I sell a lot of goldfish. They flathead time of the year too. <laughs> yeah. So I, I sell a lot of goldfish. Now, how deep is your facility here? How deep does it have to be to harvest crawdads? You know, it really don't need to be that deep. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe a couple feet deep, really, but mine's a little deeper. I mm -hmm. one a little crazy, and mine's about 10 feet in some spots and mm -hmm. whatnot, but they really love the shadow ends and around branches, mm -hmm. and you can see here, come here and during the night, and you can just see them sitting all over the branches, mm -hmm. reaching for food. During the night, you can take a flashlight down and, Hey, you just see thousands of them just all along this little shoreline mm -hmm. here I got. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, once they bred and get up to size, you uh, trap them. Trap them. To, to sell them because you can't just go in and dip them out with a net. Right. There's a little strategy to <laughs> right, it sometimes. Right, right. little strategy yeah. to sell them. And we're going to get around to showing them how, you, how your operation work, how you actually uh, 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 do them. Now, feeding them, do you have to feed them or they kind of feed 
They you know, find food in the pond to they, eat up. Oh, there's tons of food in there. There's frogs, there's uh, minnows, there's topads, bugs. Mm -hmm. they, they eat everything. They okay. eat greens, they eat... Yeah, I, I throw a lot of floating catfish pellets. Okay. I kind of got like right here, these... Uh -huh. I don't know. I pick them up, okay. track the supply, but I, when I throw them down there, I see them going crazy over them, but right. I don't have to really feed them. They pretty much figure out a way to take care of themselves mm -hmm. in this pond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have a lot of filtration or uh, air. This is sort of like a, uh, a regular farm pond. Right, regular closed pond. Right. I, I get some runoff water in it, but nothing special. Right, right. Okay, uh, so now these are... Uh, you don't have to put any special, like you said, housing or uh, anything in that form. You know, sometime when you breed stuff, you have to have breeder uh, baskets or breeder, you know, little houses or breeder this, breeder that. These are, uh, are self-contained and pretty easy to raise. You just need to get licensed to do it if you want to sell them. Correct. Or, or raise them your own self for your self-consumption to go fishing with and stuff like that. I know here in the state of Kansas, you got to get inspected, which yeah. I applied for a license a couple years ago when I actually approached you about selling right. them for um, fish bait. Cause right. I, I figured it'd be a lot easier to do it and doing it through produce. And uh, when I got to look at it, it ain't really that hard to apply for a license here in the state of Kansas. And they um, inspect your property, inspect your pond, and make sure there ain't no mussels and things they don't want in the lakes here in Kansas. Right, right, right. All right, then, but, uh, Howard, uh, we're going to take a short commercial break, and we'll be right back. We're going to see how you run this outfit. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Paul White Show. We're on location just east of Wichita, and I'm at a uh, crayfish goldfish breeder, uh, one that I buy some of my crawdads from. So... Uh, we're going to we find out how he uh, runs his operation, what got him started in it, how he got interested in doing it. So, Howard, now we're going to uh, see. Now, this is the goldfish end of it, where you uh, 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 feed them at times and trap them. So, we're going to feed them a little bit now and see if there anything's in there, stirring okay. around. Or? Okay, yeah, just see how to use these old floating gold, uh, catfish pellets. And okay. I got a little trap out there. I see if okay. you can see on camera, I just kind of throw them out there, see if I get them a little riled up. Right. So once they find out that food is in there, it probably take a minute or so. Yeah, once they find out, sometimes it spooks them a little bit and then they mm -hmm. come back then and they, they, come just, back. they just come crazy up there sometimes. It all depends on the weather. Right, right. They really sometimes get a little temperamental. And with the rain we had last night too, it probably uh, it washes some food back off into the water and runoff. But I don't think we really had enough rain last night to have a good runoff. You know, it's more of a soaking in. We haven't had any in a while. It's, it's funny that how I got caught up in the selling the goldfish too. You know, I bought them for feeder fish for okay. the crawfish, and right. then I found out there was a demand through your shop right. for the goldfish. Right. Right. So now this is your net, also your trap that I see you got a rope around it. That's kind of to hold the food in the area uh, uh, to get them to go in uh, the trap. And then you pull the, the trap up and this is the goldfish trap right here, not the crayfish, right? Correct. Yeah, because when the wind's blowing, some of the food will work right, off over right. there and I won't be able to trap it. So I try to eat that little rope around it, keep the food contained in this area and it encourages them to hang out around my trap a little bit better. Right. That's my strategy there. Well, it was a few out there. Like you said, it probably startled them a little bit. Yeah, sometimes when I throw it out there, they get startled, then they start coming back in. You'll see the bubbles and see how they, they'll start coming all back up in here in just a second. Now, how long has your trap been in the water? It constantly stays in the water? I usually leave it in the water uh, most of the time. Sometimes I'll hang it out if I know a storm's coming. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like just to submerge it. That way the debris and stuff don't right. come by and knock it over. Right, so. right. Yeah, they look like a few little bubbles around it. Like you said, they're probably, probably skeptical. 
They like to make sure the food's not booby trapped. <laughs> yeah, they, they actually, goldfish are actually smart. They say they, a lot of people say they only got a two second memory span, but mm -hmm. they can remember things up to a year. Yeah. Yeah, especially the feeding place. Yeah, and these guys, they're actually a little ornery. You've noticed yourself, I think, they're right. in the shop. Right, right, yeah, right. A lot of times I just sit there on this old picnic table, throw me a handful out there and just get a little patience, you know. I've caught up to 20 some at one time out of that trap a few times. Yeah, it's sort of just like fishing, you know, you gotta be patient. Exactly. With them, they don't just, hey, bam, there yeah. we go. There you go. He bought some buddies with him then. Yeah, he did. It must be a nice morning to eat, because sometimes yep. after it rains, they don't like to be too active. Right, right, especially like we mentioned earlier, a heavier rain where you got really got the runoff. Right. You know, they haven't had a lot of runoff, because we haven't had any rain in a while, so it's sort of like a soaking rain. Okay, do we want to pull up the trap and see if anything's actually in the trap yeah, right we, now? Yeah, we can pull it up and uh, see if there's anything in there. And, and then not. maybe let it back down and... Yeah, well. Crawdads. Yep. Actually, this one went a little sideways on me. Pull that rope right there that you've got. Kind of give it a good old tug. See none in there. Okay, that one's just got crawdads in it right now. Pull this one. Whoa. Okay, this one here. Uh, this one here pulls it back out. Oh, okay. So a two-hand job. Yeah, I had it a one-hand job, then I decided to change it around a little bit. You said I'm still playing with it a little bit to get the... All right, pull yours out just a little bit, Paul. Or pull yours in, there you go. I wonder if it's hung up now. There we go. I think the tree has. Oh, I know what's wrong. Got it tied off so the wind stuff. Yeah, it's tied it all off last night. And I... All okay, right, now pull yours. There we are. Here's a, give me a good old tug there. About right there might be the. There we are. That'll okay, work you, right there. That's to reset it, right? Yep. Now you can actually probably just go ahead and relax and let it let it down. You can probably just drop all that. You know, there's a little work in this. You know it. Well, yeah, it's like I said. I'm been playing around with a little different little. Ways of doing it? Yeah, see, before when I did it, I had just this one little spot, and I'd, all I can do is go up and down, and I'd take this longer pole and reach out okay. and scoop them in. Okay. And now that rope and this rope pulls it in and cross. Okay. But it's so kind of like. So now you need to rebate it, uh, so to speak, inside the rope and let, uh, to see if any of them will come in there and do it. Do you actually have to pull it up while they're actually eating? Yeah, a lot of times I see how they're getting active over there. They'll get active right, in the middle of that rope. Right, they yeah. And so sometimes I throw a little past it and just get them a little active. Right. Okay, then uh, let's go and take a go ahead and take a commercial break, and then we'll move over to the crawdad uh, where you actually catch the crayfish, crawdads, okay. at, and see how that operation works. Nope. You're watching the Paul White Show. We'll be right back after commercial break. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back to the Paul White Show. We're on location at a uh, breeder, believe it or not, a bait breeder, uh, Howard. Uh, we just east of Wichita, and this is his facility right here. We were, before commercial break, looking at uh, the goldfish. However, we didn't have any luck getting any in the net, but uh, they were coming up and feeding where you could see them feed. Now, we've moved around to the other side of the pond, basically, and uh, he's going to show us his crawdad uh, crayfish trap, and we'll see if we got any crayfish in the trap, Howard. See, what I usually do is I grab some of these gloves because sometimes that water is a little stinky, muddy, right. icky, or they like to bite too, you know, when right. they get a little on or right. so. Now, what breed of uh, uh, crawfish is this that you raise? You know, do they have a name? I know they, these are the red ones, uh, yeah. so to speak, and they, they seem to be a little more aggressive than the gray yeah. ones are. Uh, yeah, you know, I. I think I might know at one time. Mm -hmm. There's, I get a little confused between them and done some literature. There's so many different types. Right, of okay, okay. That I really don't know the exact type of these. Okay. But I know these are the aggressive ones. Oh yeah, they, they can be a little sucker sometimes. Oh, there's a few in there. I just simply, I like these traps here, which I think I purchased one one time off you, Paul. Right. They go in the side here. Uh-huh. On both sides there, you can see that. It gets them a little confused and they uh, can't find their ways back out. But I like these traps good. I, I just empty them out like that. Okay, now what kind of bait is that you use? This, this here is uh, chicken breast. Which oh, okay. I usually pick it up at the local market store. Right. You can get a bunch of them for four or five bucks, you know. Right. And then. And they go in and feed off of that chicken breast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty simple trap to, uh, to, to operate if. Uh, you know, and, and some, some, some anglers like to, you know, catch their own bait and stuff. And some of them uh, buy those traps themselves and uh, set them, you know, in different spots where they think there's uh, crayfish yet so they could catch some for bait, you know. But, yeah, those are pretty simple. These, uh, you're right, because I've made a bunch of them and done different things, but these are just so simple for a fisherman to take out on the bank and uh, use. Especially if you're camping out. Well, you, you can know, see how many it already caught. Yeah. Just, well, yeah. And I just take it. And sometimes I try a little different spots, you right. know. But I'm going to throw this back over here in this old area because it seems like it does pretty good. Now, have you ever timed it? Like you throw it in and out, come back in an hour and check it? Sometimes. See if anything's in there? And I know they be in different locations. Yeah on the pond, so that's why you move it around. That's just like when you're fishing, you, if you don't catch nothing in 15 minutes at one spot, you need to get up and move somewhere else because they're not in that area, you know. These don't do too bad. I can keep fishing the same area. I've probably uh -huh. been in that same area over a month, and um, where you can see how many I yeah. caught. I threw that trap in there less than, oh, what, I probably threw it in there about three o'clock yesterday. So, okay. Uh, sometimes there'll be more, sometimes right. there'll be less. It right. All depends on the weather or how on it they get, but. Right. Yeah, those are some aggressive little buddies right there. Yeah, they are. That's why I like running. And clothes. a lot of anglers like those more aggressive ones because they attract the fish more. Oh yeah. You know they, when they're fishing. They don't like them to just fall over and die. They like right. them. They like them to be a little mean. Right. Like that, I could feel him through my glove. Right. Sometimes. Right here in the back, usually how you tell if it's male or female. Oh, it's. Yeah, this one here. I'm thinking it's female. It's usually a male has a little. Tentacles there. Okay. And the females usually a little whiter on the back. This right. One, this one got me a little confused because I don't see the spot I'm looking for here, but right there is where you tell. Right. That little, the females are a little whiter, like I said. Uh -huh. uh, they carry their eggs. Like I said, they right. carry about 200 of them. So man, they need a big body. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of eggs for one 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 crayfish to produce. And then there's multiple sizes in there too. Some of them a little bigger than the other, but but the average size is the same. About yeah, the same, that's about what the, the average. Yeah, coming out here, that's about the average size. It seems like right, right, and and that's about the size they like them. Uh, most uh, uh, anglers like the medium sized ones. They don't like those great big ones. Most of them, <laughs> some of those are afraid of the big ones because they that old saying when they get a hold to you, they won't turn loose. Oh, to they the won't. Uh, you know that's. That That's an old saying right there that they won't turn loose till they find it. But 
Uh, that's that's pretty simple. And like I said, they rebreed 200 eggs maybe, and, and they do it most of the year long until the water yeah, about, actually yeah. freezes up. I think in around March right. till the, about the end of the year when the water freezes right. up. But there's some holes around here. I don't right. know if you can catch any on camera here, but uh, here's probably one here. That's where they go down and burrow at. They right. go down these holes, and here's one here and one here. Actually in the dirt. Down yeah, in there. It comes out of the water. Yeah, there's some yeah. of them, like I said, has been over six feet. Um, I've stuck right. a six-foot ruler in there and never touched the bottom, but a lot of times you see them all along here or see them hanging right. out of them holes. Right. It's okay. nice and cool for them down there, and that's how they produce. They go in there to have their babies. Right. Well, Harold, thank you for uh, letting me come out today. I'm going to give a little fishing report. Uh, uh, this is a pretty neat little operation here, and, and uh, thank you for letting us uh, invade your space today. No on, problem. On showing how some of the bait uh, is actually gathered and, and makes it to the bait shop for anglers to fish with. All right, we're going to give a little fishing report here and let you know what's going on at some of the lakes. At Butler State Lake, uh, the crappie are good. Largemouth bass are good. They're catching them up to 18 inches. At Cheney, uh, white bass uh, are good. Uh, they're catching them up to 24 inches. Walleye fair. Crappie are poor right now, Cheney. Blue cats are fair. Channel cats are good. And they're using prepared and cut bait to catch them. White perch is good, which most of the time they are at Cheney. Remember, if you catch them, don't throw them back. Keep them and eat them. At El Dorado, uh, blue cat are fair. They're catching them 17 to 18 inches. Wipers are fair. White bass are fair. Walleye are fair. And they're using crank bait and jigs to catch them. Channel cats are good. They use them on worms and cut bait. Harvey County East, channel cats are good up to 10, 10 inches to 7 pounds prepared on prepared and uh, cut bait. Large mouth bass are good. Bluegill, excellent. They're spawning right now. That's up at Harvey County. Marion County, everything's good at Marion County. Channel cat, white crappie, large mouth, bluegill, wipers, white bass, uh, all of those are good. In fact, they said that large mouth of, uh, is excellent up there. Uh, in Marion Reservoir, all species are fair at Marion. I don't know what's going on. They did have that algae problem, but I think they have lifted that. Sedwood County, uh, Lake Afton, white perch fair. Channel cats are excellent on cut bait and prepared bait. Crappie is poor. Wellington City Lake, channel cat good. Wipers good. Large mouth good. Wichita Urban Report is that channel cats are good. They're catching them two to three pounds. Uh, crappie is fair to poor. Large mouth bass are uh, good, uh, up to 18 inches. Bluegills up to one pound. They are excellent. Uh, Winfield City Lake, channel cats fair to good, up to five pounds. White bass fair, wipers fair, and walleye fair. All right, that was a good little fishing report for you. Thank you for watching the Paul White Show. We'll see you next week.